this is Joseph Koga. I'm at ALA Annual 2015 on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process Blog, Keep On Trucking, Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, Jenny. Hey, my name is Jenny Hinchcliffe, and I'm uh, also known as Red Letter Day. Uh, and I am here at ALA. I was uh, one of about probably 30 invited artists. Okay. Uh, we're here as part of the Zine Pavilion. So we're all small press publishers, we're all makers. Um, we all do a lot of our own kind of handmade uh, books and zines. Yeah, sure. Um, and my particular focus is uh, correspondence art. I also make artist stamps. And correspondence art is something that became popular in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, many people kind of these days know guys like Ray Johnson, who's becoming very familiar and well-known. Um, okay. Collage artists like Donald Evans. And, and the idea is they're taking used um, mail, uh, either art pieces or just mail letters and... Yeah. Uh, presenting them in a way that's novel and considered a completely different artistic piece? Yeah, so most correspondence artists, the idea arose out of this theory that there were a lot of artists out there who wanted to go around the gallery system because the gallery system was sort of elitist, it's kind of uh, sure. academic, and so art should be made available to anybody, all people are artists. And so Miller was sort of this political statement in the 70s and 80s. And it played directly into zine culture as well. Um, right. That you could exchange with people, that you could do it in this way. Right. Everything's right. just being passed around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. exactly. And how did you get started um, making and organizing uh, mail art? You know, I started, I've always sent things through the mail to my family, to my friends. I wrote letters in high school and college. Um, sure. But, I really kind of got involved in the more artistic aspect of it in 1996, and so I started a zine called Red Letter Day. Um, I wanted to meet other sort of like-minded people who would send things through the mail. Okay. And, you know, zine culture being what it is, you make your zine, you send it out to a bunch of people. In this case, I started with issue number one, and it was the so I put out a call for entries, and I asked that all of the artists send a piece of mail art to me. And You're doing that through zine shows, shows or um, online? I you know what? I sent out postcards, yeah. and then I would also I put a call in like broken pencil and zine you know, just sort of like the places that I knew about. Right. And also through my address book, my mail art address book. Um, and so I received mail in exchange, and I would give people a copy of the zine as a thank you for their contribution. Sure. And so um, part of the thing is every all the artwork is Xeroxed, but then it comes with a photo CD, so everything is in color, yeah. which is kind of a nice way to do it. So that was sort of one of my jumping off places for uh, you know, my male art career, or whatever yeah, you want yeah, to call yeah. it. <laughs> Doing so. it basically to the point where you can work at a show instead of just yeah. as a hobby. Yeah, exactly so. Okay. Yeah. And what's been your experience with it? When someone walks up, um, do they do they ask you strange questions like, "Is this um, art?" or do you mean you're making the postcards that I see in the mall? Mm -mm, <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, you know, every every person who comes to the table is a great opportunity to sort of introduce and educate. So there is sure. a lot of sort of information that goes on some people really get it they get it right away and they're like yeah. oh you know I I always send postcards I write letters to my grandma I send art things through the mail a lot I hear uh, folks say wow I've been making and sending this crazy art through the mail but I never knew that there that were that other people thing. like me yeah, out yeah. there but you know I mean it's about half and half that I sort of you know I say oh you get it and then the other half I'm like oh here let me explain it to you so yeah it's equal even Steven. Okay. And most of your efforts right now is focused on organizing the uh, mail art zine or the correspondence zine? Or uh, your... Right now, I spend a lot of time. I run a monthly kind of correspondence co-op here in San Francisco. Fantastic. Um, so you're local to the area? I am local to San okay. Francisco. Um, last year, I organized a big conference, a convention called Ex Postal Facto, um, which right. was a three-day convention of correspondence artists, artist students. Um, we had workshops, we had lectures, there was a big exhibition. Um, that took up a lot of my time. Right. Um, 
So are you dealing with a lot of collectors as well, or it's mostly zine, uh, zine producers and collectors that you're speaking with? You know, it's mostly a lot of other correspondence artists. And okay. So, you know, over time you build up your own archive of correspondence and, you know, like art that you have. Sure. Um, so I would say the majority of people that I correspond with are, are other kind of people like me who, right. who send art through the mail. Um, but about a third, I would say, are also zinesters. So okay. The two worlds really overlap a lot. Yeah. So, um, so are is the majority of your audience just people who are already in the the culture of um, nail art? Like, how do you how do you get the word out there to oh, other people? I mean, you said that you yeah. don't necessarily go to galleries because yeah. it started as a push against the gallery scene. Right. So. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, you, is, yeah, um, is would, the mail art book a traditionally published book or it's self-published? This is traditionally published. It was put out by the gallery that held the exhibition. Okay, um, fantastic. I had been involved. I'm involved. I had, oh, sorry, I started in 96, but... Yeah. The publishing industry has changed pretty significantly in that time. Yeah, it's changed significantly, but also in 2009, I co-authored a book called Good Mail Day, which really kind of introduced people to the idea of contemporary mill art scene. And that was published by Quarry, Rockport, their national publisher. So that really got a lot of people thinking about it. People who suddenly I'd never heard from, I'd never corresponded with, who were really like, what is this thing about? Yeah. And so that sort of ushered in this really interesting era of um, folks who didn't know, folks who were interested in learning more about sending things through the mail, um, okay. you know, what cool stamps are, what people can do, how you can sort of get around the postal system and the gallery system and all of that. So um, there really is kind of this interesting new wave, this new renaissance of people who are interested in postal related things. So. Yeah. That, I would say, those are primarily a lot of the people I also am now corresponding with. So, yeah. so you end up, yeah, just talking with a lot of your fans. Yeah, your yeah. As well. yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, it makes perfect sense. It's but. like word of mouth, except we're doing mm -hmm. all of it with stamps and, like, stationery. <laughs> so, yeah, it's you tell one person and they tell a friend and they share a mailing address and, you know, it just kind of grows from there, which okay. is and a great part. How would you recommend an artist get involved in correspondence Ooh. art if, if they were interested in it? I mean, it sounds yeah. like you just kind of fell into it because you were basically already doing it before you realized yeah. this was oh, a man. phenomenon. <laughs> well, now, gosh, people have it really easy now, I think, yeah. because there's the internet, right? So yeah. my first suggestion that I always tell folks who are interested in getting into correspondence art is to look up a group online called the IUOMA. It stands for the International Union of Male Artists. Okay. Um, it's run by a guy in the Netherlands, and it's sort of like Facebook for correspondence artists. So you set up a profile, you start kind of meeting other people online, you can search according to country or city, yeah. you can start exchanging with start people. start mailing things. Yeah. yeah, so that's a great easy way to jump in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did you, uh, you're local to the area, so I, I assume you've, have you done ALA before? I realize it's a rotating <laughs> conference. Okay. How did I you hear it. about ALA and decide to, to pursue it? Obviously, yeah. they seem pretty open-minded. They have um, a zine pavilion, that's, yeah. as you mentioned, um, as well as just Artist Alley and gaming pavilions and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, but how did you know that your work would be a good fit for ALA? Well, that wasn't my decision. Okay. I was actually invited to be here, so we all fantastic. were. Um, and it was organized by Kelsey Smith, who's fantastic. And so um, I feel like it just kind of magically came together that she yeah. sent me an email and it I'd you seen just my sat stuff. Back and, and, yeah. yeah, so that's... Uh, that's how I'm here this okay. weekend. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure how, no. <laughs> how the zine um, got set yeah. up. I, I know in the Artist Alley, if you submitted a piece of art, you got a free table, essentially, ah, which I, is fantastic for independent yeah. creators who might not necessarily have Absolutely. $200 to throw at a table. At Absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, it's been a fantastic experience so far. I've met fantastic people from all over the country. And, as well, I've also met some people that I've only ever spoken with online. So sure. it's been a great... Um, experience to get in front of yep. cool 
school librarians <laughs> love zines. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't actually know how many libraries have zine collections. I know a lot of librarians mm. are just getting around to comics, so I imagine zines yeah. are even a little harder because they don't yeah. necessarily have a, that hard spine and they might not last right. as long as a professionally bound book. Right. Um, so that's just something that librarians probably shy away from because they're trying to think long term. Mm, but yeah. what's what's been your experience with how many librarians know what zines are, how many librarians are interested in building a zine collection versus already have a zine collection? You know, I would say that just based on the weekend and sort of what I've seen and what I've heard, it's about 50-50. So like 50% of the folks who walk by the table already understand what zines are and they're sure. looking you know, to acquire or to get new things or collect new artists that they haven't heard of before. Um, and about the other 50%, it really is a little bit of education. Like, you know, what's this thing? Um, who produces it? Yeah, uh, who is the target audience? Yeah, absolutely. So, as far as hard statistics of zine libraries in the United States, I could give you those numbers, but... Um, <laughs> no, I'm just talking about your personal you know, experience, basically. I, I mean, personally, I just always donate one copy of everything to the San Francisco Public Library because they right. have a very robust um, zine collection, which is very Bay Artist specific. So, right. um, you know, I just love them and I love giving to them. So, um, but they're also, I know, very specific zine libraries around the United States, around the country. So. Okay. And do you know, can, can I request? the copies of those oh, yeah. zines from yeah. I, I don't mean if, if I'm local to the area I mean like right. do zine collections move around as an art gallery might or uh, it tends to be in a central library yeah if it's if it's if zines are you know an official zine library they're usually yeah. married to the spot that they're in yeah, you know so that whether sense. that's a college or whether it's a public library they usually stay okay. at the institution Right. Yeah. Would you have any advice to uh, a zine producer who's considering attending ALA for the first time? Oh, ooh, that's a good question. What would <laughs> I say? I would say, <laughs> practically speaking, yeah. bring lots of business cards, yeah. logistically. But then also just be ready to talk about your stuff. Because people are really curious and they yeah. want to hear you. And you certainly know, librarians speak. are buying for themselves here as well. So yeah, there's no reason not to promote your work, even if they can't go back to Baker and Taylor and order right. it or whatever. Right, like they right. will just buy it for themselves at yeah. the shelf. So. Yeah, and I mean, you know, zines are usually at a really great, they're very pocket friendly. So, yeah. you know, it's not going to take a, a huge hit off the wallet and, you know, if they see something, it's it's really easy for them to just say, oh, I love what you're doing, and they can support you in that way, and it's a really positive thing. So, But yeah, I would just say be ready to talk about your stuff, because everyone is always really curious all the time. All the time. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, where could we find your work online? Oh, my work online? You can visit my website, which is redletterdayzine.wordpress.com. Okay. Uh, and I'm also on Instagram under redletterdayzine, and Tumblr as well. All right. Yeah. And we could also subscribe to your uh, monthly service there as well? Uh, I do not have a monthly service. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought yeah. you said you did. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I hope you have a good ALA. Thank you so much Thank for talking you. to me. Thanks so much, Joseph. Thank you.